the decision handed down by the Fair Work Commission, Justin Ian Ross, was pretty balanced. He spoke at length about the economy. We know where that's at, but also about households unable to afford a freeze. What did you make of the decision? Well, look, Tom, I think it's um, unfortunate and not good enough that it's uh, only 1.75%, $13 a week. Um, we know these are the lowest paid workers in the country. They are, many of them uh, on the front line have helped us get through uh, the coronavirus lockdown. And um, of course, we're going to be relying on them to get out of this as well. Um, a larger increase would have been better for uh, economic stimulus. Small businesses, of course, rely on people being able to spend the money they've got. And uh, when you're in the lowest paid category, you spend everything you've got. You've got nothing for savings, so it goes straight into the economy. Um, we're very disappointed that uh, people didn't get a larger increase. Um, but uh, as uh, you know, Sally McManus has pointed out, um, it was business, the big businesses and the big business lobby that got it wrong right from the beginning when they were calling for a wage cut for the lowest paid workers. I mean, that would have just been devastating um, for right. the well, economy you, and yeah. devastating for workers. The decision in between the two, you could argue both got it wrong if you're taking that logic. But um, look, I do want to move on to a couple of other issues. University, big overhaul in how much it's going to cost, whether you enrol to be a nurse, a lot cheaper, or humanities, a lot more expensive. Obviously, your area of the arts... What have you made of what we know so far from this announcement ahead of uh, Dan Tan's speech? Well, this seems um, just to be totally backwards in relation to what we need to be doing to deal with the huge youth unemployment uh, that uh, we are being faced with. I mean, those figures that came out yesterday, the unemployment figures showing that this really is a a crisis, a jobs crisis for young Australians. And we've got many, many young Australians who are going to be unemployed, not just for the next year, not just for the next couple of years, but potentially for the next decade. And there has been an increase in interest of us from young Australians to universities as they're looking at what's going on, they're looking at their job prospects and they're thinking, well, actually, I want to go to uni and because um, that's the only hope I've got. We should be making university and TAFE virtually free. We should be making it free because what else are these young people going to do? And what we've got from this government is they're going to make some courses even more expensive now. I just think this is a kick in the guts to young Australians mm. all over again. And it's the exact opposite there... to what uh, we need to be doing. I mean, is there an element of realism? And Just one example is how oversubscribed journalism courses tend to be compared to realistically and it's a great shame, in my humble opinion, how many jobs there are actually out there that if you, you know, don't Look, um, you... Uh, seek to make this whole model realistic on how many jobs there are, it's almost cruel churning out these people with qualifications, the jobs that won't be there. You know, Tom, what we need to see is a university system that trains uh, and gives young people the skills for the future, but trying to lock people into a particular set of skills is the wrong way to go. We know now more than ever that a young person who's going to university now will probably change their jobs five, six, ten, maybe fifteen times throughout their universe, throughout their working career. So, you know, what I'm what I'm frustrated with about this announcement is that it really doesn't recognise that we need to be training people uh, for the ability to learn and and retrain. Uh, right mm. throughout their working life. This is the problem. But it is, is that a, served by, say, kind of starting a... off with an undergrad history course? Because it's quite cheap. Why not do it uh, at the moment before these government changes? I mean, is that something you necessarily need to do before I, phase two of your training or whatever happens let's... in postgrad? You know, let's be really honest with what's going on here. Today's announcement of cutting humanities courses, making them more expensive, saying that, that students should just do uh, some of those kind of um, harder edge uh, uh, courses, um, incentivising them by making it all about money. This is red meat to the coalition um, base. That's what this is. And that's what, not what university funding or training and experience for young people should be about. It shouldn't get caught up in the all politics right. of between the Liberal and the National parties. OK. Just finally as well, a motion in the Senate yesterday, so Government and Labor as well moved a motion condemning a call 
from a, a Greens member in New South Wales to redirect money from police funding. So the Greens voted against this motion. What exactly were you voting for, in your view? Look, we're voting, you know, this issue, and it's not just, um, of course, an issue here in Australia, it's being now looked at around the rest of the world, but it has been something that policy makers have been um, desperate to get attention of governments, state and federal, here in Australia for a long time, and that is uh, justice reinvestment, making sure we spend money to keep people out of crime, to keep people out of jail, preventative measures, community mm. engagement with young people. You know, people don't... Um, most people don't commit crimes, Tom, because they want to be criminals. Um, they get caught up in a cycle of poverty, of disadvantage. Um, a, there mm. is a whole lot of other issues, got mental health. There's a whole lot of issues that um, actually lead to the, to the reasons that people end up... Um, uh, you know, breaking right. laws and ending up in jail. Investing yeah, in yeah, yes. uh, so, justice systems and prevention is the best process. Right, just so what, like yeah, what we you're argue about is... around about just, just like we argue for health systems, prevention, 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 prevention is the best cure. Yes, prevention um, better than the cure is the adage. Sure but, we... but just on this, so you're talking about one side here, which is prevention. What about the other side? Because David Shoebridge, he was using the hashtag defund the police. What does that mean exactly? Fewer police, cuts to police yeah, pay? Yeah, look, I think... What, what does that if, mean? If, if, if... I'll be really straight with you, Tom. Um, I don't think um, the, uh, the phrase defund police says what uh, we want uh, here in Australia. What we want is justice reinvestment. That's translated in, in right. the Australian context and the Australian policy debate. That's what it is. And people right across different sides of politics... So you're talking about more about let's spend more money in other areas, not, not less on police. Just to clarify that point there, you're not saying in any way well, we're overfunding it, no one, police no forces? One's, or, or look, no one is... I, no, no one is suggesting that we don't need to fund our police forces. What we want is to make sure we are spending money in the right ways to keep people out of crime in the first place, making sure that there isn't an issue with police, actually keeping young people right. off the streets. We've got a huge issue with homelessness. We've got a huge issue with youth disadvantage and poverty. These are all things that lead to an increase in crime and an increase in incarceration rates. If you want to keep people out of jail, you want to deal with the incarceration rate facing uh, first Australians, you've got to mm. deal with those issues of systematic okay. um, and systemic racism and disadvantage.